Um, uh, thank you so much uh, to our program director, uh, your majesties in the house, your royal highnesses, uh, the rest of the team, fellow co-panelists, as well as fellow entrepreneurs. Good afternoon. Um, and thank you so much for the opportunity and putting together an amazing program. I think it's time for action as my co-panelists mentioned. Uh, my name is Oliver Pochin Chikizuri. I am a business strategist expert, and I also very, very focused on international trade um, and the develop business strategies. I am also the president and the CEO of the African Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center, which is an independent center that focuses on building and creating a large quantity of entrepreneurs, of entrepreneurs using um, 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 designs, engineering design, as well as because people don't realize that without entrepreneurs, nobody can get paid, including governments, everyone cannot get paid. So we really need to empower and develop a large quantity of entrepreneurs in order for us to be able to create economic growth, imagine the jobs as well as wealth um, for the continent. So uh, COVID-19 came as a blessing to us because now we are now having these dialogues as Africans and without also the empowerment of youth and women, we can forget about development. So we really need to start from the grassroots level, do that design thinking, cost of effect analysis. What are those challenges that entrepreneurs are facing and how we can help um, to build more entrepreneurs and create the Africa that we want. The Innovation Center also focuses on four pillars. So number one, it focuses on investment facilitation. Um, as we are talking now, we just finished a conference uh, yesterday, um, the Africa Trade and Customs Week on global trade. Uh, we are busy with the Africa Partners Growth, where we already have 77 investors confirmed to engage in partnership with leading women of Africa in Cape Town uh, from the 1st to the 5th of December. Uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Investment Summit is also coming back um, in March next year, where we are working with investment um, uh, portfolios that are looking at investing $10 billion um, in the African projects. Our role is just to facilitate um, the, proce the processes and make sure that the entrepreneurs understand uh, the legal complications and expectations, but also to understand how to put these projects and implement as well as technical advisory services. Uh, pillar number two, we focus on trade missions and events. Uh, we have a lineup of events uh, that are coming up next year. Uh, actually, the first um, um, trade mission will be to the Caribbean uh, with three countries, which is Jamaica, Suriname, as well as Guyana, Georgetown. Uh, in the Caribbean, then Cape Town. We will also be having Kenya. So Kenya, we're coming to you in May, as well as we'll be going to the Netherlands and back to the USA in July. So this information will be shared with you. But events are like marketing for us because marketing is creating an awareness about a product or service. And when we come together as entrepreneurs, we create a market among ourselves. The last two, one is um, market access or linkages where we help and develop entrepreneurs uh, to, to help them to develop our products, um, which is agri-cosmetics and agri-food and help them to with the markets. Um, currently we're selling to Canada. We're also selling to USA as well as in South Africa. This is actually some of the, the products. If you look at my face shining, it's one of the organic natural product. Um, from Botswana. So we do help to develop, facilitate, and to help with certification uh, for our entrepreneurs in Africa. The last one is a mentorship program. We have what we call a hand-holding support. When you, as an entrepreneur, you are starting a business, there's so many confusion factors on how to uh, validate your idea, how to set up a legal business, a uh, legal business investor meet, um, and actually uh, implementing and building your business. So we do have a nine months mentorship uh, program. Mm -hmm. And actually also once after that is done, we don't leave you away. We, 
we, we, we, we absorb it into the community of fellow entrepreneurs and leaders, and we come together. I think what we can learn as a critical um, uh, um, uh, advice from the COVID-19, I think for me, is about how do we collaborate using goal 17 of the, of the uh, Millennium Development Goals, a meaningful collaboration and partnerships, we as key stakeholders and as Africans coming together to build the Africa that we want. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to, to add, I mean, I think there are so many impediments to capacity building in terms of supporting. Give an example of farmers, uh, farmers that are producing maybe um, avocado peels or maybe vegetables. Uh, one of the first challenges that they don't have enough technical support and they don't have equipment. Then there's the issue of infrastructure and logistics. Um, uh, so we actually you have to go to those grass level, send people to go and train. And even when you train, that training has to be tailored because like what you call your mini MBA class, you have to go there and work with the local community where you can actually develop it in a language that uh, they can understand, help them to become cooperatives or to work together. Then you can ensure sustainability and also standardization that they do understand what are the expectations. The work of Euro African, for example, that's a good example that can be done across the continent to help our producers. Then secondly, there's an issue of value addition to industrialization. When are we going to pay our farmers well? I mean, we have been exploited where we sell let's say your cocoa beans from Ghana uh, to Europe, and then when you buy the chocolate bag, which is added with so much sugar, you buy with a lot of money. So that's another challenge. Then there's a the go-to-market strategy. Actually, we have developed at AIC a go-to-market strategy where we help entrepreneurs with how do you take your business or your product um, to the market. And then lastly, um, lastly is that when we do events, for us, events are not uh, a, what, what my um, Venetia like to call <laughs> nice to have. Our events are much more looking at meaningful collaborations, programs that looks beyond an event. And also, even our training programs addresses different issues. And one of, the, of those issues is how do you um, look at the optimal way to achieve seven key results? For example, learn from the best. So you have your key stakeholders and, and in the, within the ecosystem, your sector-specific mentors, uh, your consultants, your regional bodies, your UN women, for example, um, your government, the state, um, um, as well as the entire business community, your academia. We found out that when it comes to agriculture, we need partnership with the universities that can, they can be able to do research and test our soils and products, expand your network of winners. And I think the business is just about money. I think it's more, we have to look at business beyond transactions. We have to build relationships that are meaningful. So learn from your network of winners. We are here today. There's a lot that I'm also learning. So when we are coming together we are learning from each other so there's knowledge sharing and learning from each other generate client to and grow your revenue how to most people don't know how to i asked a lady in the saloon the other day and i said um how is business today she said no we do done well we just make two thousand rand and i said how much did you actually make how much was your production cost no don't worry oliver we're making money we just make two thousand rand entrepreneurs don't really understand that Yes, you may have made 2,000 rand today, you did not make 2,000 rand. Maybe you spend 1,800 just for the production cost and you actually- So you money. only just made 200. 200. So it's very, very important that they understand uh, the financial understanding, finding the right partners. It's very, very important because as an entrepreneur, we don't have executive board of directors. So we rely on the support of our fellow entrepreneurs, of our fellow stakeholders. So this thing of collaborative approach is key to the success of any business and finding uh, the, the right partners. Lastly, and that's what, what we do as well as an organization is actually to help them how to meet investors, but also to make them ready and understand um, that be inspired, build systems. One of the biggest challenge of myself as a CEO, I've been running business for over nine years, and I was just sell, 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 sell. I did not understand systems, so I had to learn. I think I was a bad CEO. So I had to learn to build systems in my businesses, knowing who I am, 
what I want to be, and what objects and outcomes do I want in my business. And so, yeah, it's very, very important that we understand that business is beyond uh, transactions. And lastly, harnessing ideas and taking them to the globe. I think this, that's why this conversation is important. But we now need practical mm -hmm. solutions, not just talking. I think we have been talking, but let's come together. Let's build um, this Africa that we want. Thank you. Um, Oliver, I know you touched a lot on it in your previous um, submission, but I think just for, for specificity, if I could ask, how does AIEC capacitate business owners so that they are better equipped to remain resilient in global value chains? Resilience is, is something that we've all learned to become post-COVID. If you want to remain relevant, you need to be resilient. So um, in, in your large toolkit um, that you offer at AIEC, um, what's there in terms of capacitating for resilience? I think number I one, know. entrepreneurship is not for, for everyone. But yes, uh, so we do, as I talk about the, the membership programs earlier, I think one of them that we could learn uh, from uh, COVID-19 is business, business continuity planning, uh, because there are always um, mm -hmm. pandemics, but how do you plan for the unforeseen um, circumstances? Um, so I think that's number one. And, and I also think that by having financial support and business acumen, um, even though now we're talking about how do we harness ideas, take them to the globe, how do we sell our products, how do we participate uh, equally within um, the global trade? There's another issue on one side we are forgetting here, which is, I think patients touched on it briefly, which is the certification of our products, um, yep. the, the value chain. Bait Bridge Border Post here in Limpopo, South Africa, it, um, it transports more than, um, I think, for seven countries. But they have digitalized what they call the one window opportunity, digitalized the process and the system. But because of corruption, because of corruption, they are still, they are still, electricity is off like four hours a day. And they go back to manual, uh, a lot of corruption going on. Last month, we had a product from Nigeria, which is the Master T, whereby they sent products to South Africa for the exhibition last month. I'm telling you, it only was cleared three days ago uh, when the client already went back to Nigeria. So I think there's a lot of work that we need to do, we as entrepreneurs, to help our leaders. Uh, we need a dialogue also with the government, the state, uh, the policymakers, and all the key stakeholders to address the issue of, of customs, of movement of goods and people, um, um, the different issues so that we can be able to create a conducive environment uh, for our traders. Thank you. Thanks for that, Oliver. But I mean, back to me as a, well, not me practically, but I'm speaking as the voice of a small or medium uh, business owner out there who is looking for tools for resilience before I get into global value chains. I hear what you're talking about in terms of government policy agreements, trade agreements and all of that. But from a, a small or medium business perspective, what can I do for myself for me to become more resilient uh, to um, enable me to be a participant in these global value chains? What are my tools for resilience? Join AEC Business Directory. So part of the nine months mentorship program is that we create that. So we tailor the different programs and training based on the design thing around it or the cause of effect analysis. So we look at what are your challenges, for example, IP, intellectual property um, and innovation, which we don't respect as Africans, but it's the key to any sustainability of any businesses. So, so what we need to do is that we want them to join the different programs. Patients mentioned mm -hmm. one of the trainings they do for exporters participate in those training programs, invest in yourself, invest in your team as a business um, so that you can be able to empower your team um, to be able to build a, a sustainable business beyond your country. So I think um, number one, I will encourage them to join our programs. 
We run masterclass, we run mentorship programs, we run workshops around these different issues. And we don't just come and bump you with a workshop or a masterclass. We first do research on your community, on your team, on your entrepreneurs, and see what are the challenges and how best we can bring the tools to help them alleviate or to take them to the next level. So invest in yourself, participate in the training programs. Second question is organic certification is very is a very important requirement for export with proper plans around capacitating and equipping can assist a very rural person to participate in the value chain. Is there any solutions that target upskilling bottom of the pyramid communities who can capacitate who can participate here. I uh, thank you so much. Musa. Great um, uh, submission. Um, there are organizations such as She Trade Africa that do help uh, uh, mostly women and youth entrepreneurs with certification. Um, there's also Fair Trade Africa that do facilitate. In South Africa, we have a business, uh, we have under the Trade and Industry Ministry, we have small CEDA. Uh, which is small enterprise development agents that do facilitate uh, some of these workshops that help and connect you with the organization that do uh, certifications. Um, but I think through organizations as well, we could link or connect to the bodies that can help you with uh, certification. For example, if you are looking for the American market as well as the Canadian markets, they also want you to be certified by Ecoset. Uh, for example, currently we are looking for a lot of soya beans. I think there's a company that's 20,000 metric tons from Africa, but you have to have been certified by Ecoset. But we can assist through our different organizations uh, by linking you up with the right uh, key stakeholders within the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Musa, and the rest of Africa. It was a great session. I wish they say in the media, enemy is the, time is the enemy of, of, of media. But I think lastly, I'll comment on, it was the second last, one of the last question. And for me, it's by leveraging the power of emerging exponential and digital technologies. Like African entrepreneurs are now living through an unusual time, which um, uh, the capacity of technology to solve problems is starting to match the scale of the business market challenges, but also with the Africa Free Continental Agreement, which we think we have to fully participate as youth and women, and we have to engage on in March as well, um, because also one of the bigger challenges for us to be able to achieve or to fully implement the SCFTA is without youth and women, we can forget. So we need that inclusion. And participate, yes, you can reach us. I think if you go to the website, Africa Trade Conference, my LinkedIn profile is there. You can link us and reach out to us. We have a prompt. Uh, we do prompt response and yeah, participate in the different trainings. I think you're offering is also doing some trainings. We also do some mentorship programs. So register and, and participate in, in investing in yourself and your team and let's build Africa that we want. Thank you.